I thought to get started, there is a question of what exactly a robot is in 2014. The first, what we modern era robots are from 1961, the Unimate on the left there, which was uh, in a GM factory in, in New Jersey. And these robots followed a series of actions repeatedly, one again and again and again, without sensing the external environment. At my current company, called Rethink, we have been building a different sort of industrial robot that uh, is aware of its environment, is safe to be close with, and a line worker not only can be up close with it, but a line worker can figure out how to train it to do some task in, in just a few minutes. We've seen this sort of thing with the Amazon. The robots go and get the shelves and bring the shelves to the human picker, and the human picker reaches in and does the grab and the packings. And I think this is a, a new sort of robot that we're going to see more of by making the robots be tools that ordinary workers can use. Are they first going to hit an, an already battered uh, uh, labor sector, you know, traditional employment in, in, in manufacturing? That, that's yesterday's news. That's been going on for 30 plus years. I think it's more likely to hit in the part of the workforce, as you say, that's already been fairly hardly hit by technology and automation. It's the kind of the lower end of the middle class is where the real job loss, the real wage compression has happened. I think that's likely to continue because what a lot of lower middle class workers do is some kind of work in the physical world. They're home health aides, they're cooks, they're working out there in the world. Automation is coming to some of those jobs. Yeah, but I'm worried we're not going to have enough robots, really. Mm -hmm. uh, Say again? We're not going to have enough robots. Uh, there's a demographic inversion happening where there's going to be so many more older people relative to the number of younger people. We've never had such a demographic change in all of human history before. So providing those services is, is going to be very, very expensive. If you had to guess what the impact of that demographic change would be, what would both of you say? I think it's where at least a lot of the low to mid-skilled jobs are going to come in the, in yeah. the years ahead. It's just taking care of grandma yeah. with probably a robot arm that helps lift her or turn her or do the, the work that, right. that's hard to do. But I'm with Rod. It's going to be a big source of, of labor, yeah. and it's not going to be automated out of existence. Yeah. Well, what's interesting is this vision of, of it being a hybrid, of, of the robot not as a substitute, but as an aid. Yeah, I, I see it as people and robots working together yeah. more and more. The, the thing that I have really liked most is when Baxter's gone into some factories, uh, the workers have seen it operating and then have come to whoever's sort of in charge of Baxter and, yeah. and said, can we get Baxter to do this job that I hate? <laughs> um, and wow. uh, so uh, one little plastics factory, grinding the misformed parts, they have to put on a mask, it's a dirty, dusty job. They've got a Baxter doing that 24 hours a day now. That was the election of the people in the factory. Up until now, technology has done at least a good, as good a job of creating jobs and creating work, all up and down the income spectrum, as it's done of destroying jobs and destroying work. It's been a really happy balance so far. I personally think that balance might be about to change, but I, that's not gospel at all. People have been saying that for 200 years. It hasn't happened yet. Yeah. We thought the PC was going to eliminate office jobs, and yep. that was one of the things. It didn't eliminate office jobs. It well, changed what office workers did. Over the long term, it, did. it changed. <laughs> it, it eliminated the office yeah. jobs, but that wasn't but, in but, the But first the hype two cycle years. was way, way ahead of that. And if you had yeah. bought stock in paper companies at the time when we were talking about the paperless office, uh, you know, you'd, you'd be owning wire. You wouldn't just be reading it. <laughs>